Hello everybody, my name is Paddy Cahill. I'm a CNM2 in St. Luke's Kilkenny, St. Luke's General Hospital. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about the recent QI award that I received uh, for my project. Uh, my project was aimed at helping children who have suffered loss uh, of a loved one in the intensive care. Um, so my background is intensive care. I've worked in intensive care for over 15 years. Um, I have a strong passion about end of life care and um, this idea that I had about helping children uh, who've suffered loss in the ICU came about um, from a couple of professional um, interactions I had and some personal um, experience that I have. Um, the, I suppose, professional um encounters I had were, were very tragic ones. We had a couple of extremely traumatic cases in the ICU last year. Uh, one of a, a young boy who um, suffered a very tragic uh, and freak accident who passed away and left three young siblings behind uh, with his parents. Um, we had another case of a young boy whose dad had committed suicide. He was an only child, a 12-year-old boy. And we had a lady who committed suicide who left um, five kids under the age of 10. And that was particularly difficult. The, the husband that was left uh, behind and grieving um, said to me, what do I do? Where do I start? And I didn't have the answer. And it was really difficult to give him the answers that, that he needed. And I, I think it was almost impossible, but he just didn't know where to start. And that got me thinking. Um, I think any idea that you have for a change or an improvement will be based upon your experiences, both professionally and personally. Uh, personally, I have experience of grief. Um, I have two perfectly healthy and lovely children. Uh, Gloria is nine and Louis seven. Uh, but they do have a sister in heaven. Uh, my first daughter, Martha, died the day after she was born unexpectedly. We we had a, a normal course through pregnancy and, and she died of a surfactant deficiency. And... I have a deep connection and a deep understanding with uh, people who are grieving because I've been there and I, I recognize the helpless feeling and I recognize the, the feeling of not knowing what to do because you can't think straight, um, you know, and, and sometimes what you need at that point is, is practical information and simple instruction and kindness you know and we got great help at the time from a charity called Felicon we got a memory box and we made wonderful memories uh, of our little girl and that's that's all we have now are these these artifacts and these memories um, so I think my personal experience with grief and my professional experience working in the intensive care for a lot of years um, kind of nurtured this project. Um, so the project really was how do we help these people? How do we help that man with four children? Um, you know, how do we help that family who have young siblings whose, whose brother died? How do we help that young boy whose dad died so suddenly and so tragically? Um, and it led me down a path of research mainly. Um, research into getting questions. So the, the, the questions were what, what, what do the children need and what do the adults need to help the children? Um, so my research led me down looking into bereavement, childhood bereavement. Um, I looked at the Irish Hospice Foundation, the Irish 
Childhood Bereavement Network, my end of life coordinator, Margaret Ryan, who was extremely helpful. Spoke to colleagues, spoke to friends and gathered information. And the information I gathered uh, led to the development of these grief packs. Um, ultimately, the, the, the content of the packs was based on the research that I did. And I, I think it's very important for any project to be evidence based. Uh, you can come up with the idea you know, on a on a whim or, you know, on a hunch or organically, but the project has to be evidence-based. And I, I think that was very important. I think that's key for future projects and, and that's advice that I would give people uh, for future projects. Um, so what I learned about childhood bereavement is that the ability for the child to process the grief is very age dependent. So a, a three year old grieves differently to an eight year old who grieves differently f to a 14 year old. And, and it's quite dependent on age. Children dip in and out of grief. They're not like adults in the way that adults can com become consumed with grief. Children dip in and out. There's a natural curiosity with death and dying with, with children and an anxiety that comes with that. Um, I think as well, you know, the beneficial things with children around grief, I learned that it's, it's good to normalize talking about grief. So these packs, you know, start a conversation and make it okay for children to talk about grief. It normalizes conversations about grief. It, it puts children in a safe space with someone they trust and allows them an opportunity to talk instead of with adults you ask them how are you how are you feeling how are you getting on with children you create a space you create an atmosphere you you know give them activities and, and that's how they uh, process grief um, allowing feelings to be freely expressed is very important and that's what I learned through the research as well as allow children to be sad allow children to be upset it's also important to allow children to get about their normal lives they're not going to be sad all the time they're going to be completely normal a lot of the time and that's okay and that's normal um, so the research culminated in the development of grief packs essentially that that are age appropriate so there's there's three age groups with the packs they are under six, six to 12 and over 12. Um, the contents of the pack are mostly worksheets um, for the smaller kids. Um, the worksheets are developed to encourage the child to talk about the grief, basically through remembering the person, writing down their feelings, these worksheets are freely available online. I just got them through Google. Um, they are, you know, very, very useful. Um, I'll show you some examples. Um, one of the examples would be the stages of grief. That looks backwards now, but it's denial, anger, bargaining. Um, depression and acceptance and, and these are the normal stages of grief but explained in a way that a child will understand another favorite of mine really i got my children to do this my memories of and it's just a little worksheet where they can write in something they always said to me my favorite thing to do with them was uh, something i loved about them was what i were what i want to remember them when i want to remember them i can when I'm feeling sad, I can talk to, you know, little things where they can fill in um, easy to do um, activities. My memory box. So again, this is writing down memories of the loved one. Um, this is one I made myself. It says, since my loved one has died, I wonder. And then a space, 
I wish and then a space and then I hope. So again, this allows the child to express themselves. Um, this is another one, very simple. You can make your own, you can download these. This is a letter, so it says, dear, and then blank, I feel blank because you're not here anymore. Sometimes I blank to help me feel better when I'm sad. One of my favorite memories of us is the things you taught me. I wish we had more time to do. If I could tell you something now, I would say um, all of these worksheets, you know, little blank sheets to draw their favorite memory. Uh, all of these are extremely helpful. They come in the pack. The packs come like this and then you have four. There's coloring pencils that we give in each pack. There's pamphlets. Um, so the pamphlets are mainly for the adults. You know, bereavement pamphlets, children's grief pamphlets, um, information, bereavement support information. Um, there is when somebody is dying in hospital. All of these are freely available. Irish Childhood Bereavement Network. Um, also included in, in, in the pack is, is just a letter from the staff in the ICU. Basically says on behalf of the critical care team, we would like to pass on our, our deepest condolences. To help you through this journey, we've created a pack. Children grieve differently to adults. Um, just encourage them to go through the pack before they speak to the child. I suppose it's, it's, it's up to them when they choose to bring the pack out and use it with the child. Um, we've also listed numbers and websites of services that they can use. So the Samaritans, Pieta, Childline, uh, local counselling services, uh, and that's included in every pack. Also, just while we're on that, that um, information sheet, we will be sending out uh, probably six months later, uh, Again, a letter of um, just thinking of you, hope you're doing okay. Um, and if they did feel that they wanted to give feedback on the packs, we will supply a QR code. And that QR code is going to bring them straight to a survey. Very simple, takes two minutes. Uh, it just gives their feedback. Was the, the pack helpful? Was it age appropriate? And would they change anything? Um, and hopefully that will improve the packs. We can, you know, I'm open to tweaking and changing the packs um, as needs be. Um, the packs are ready to use. Um, they're in the hospital. Um, the money that we got from the Irish Hospice uh, QI Award has purchased enough packs and enough books to come with the packs. Um, that should last a year or two. So the, the, the books that we provide with the packs are age appropriate as well. For the smaller kids, we have a book called No Matter What. A beautiful book. Um, describes grief. Describes loss. There's lovely illustrations. It can be used as a bedtime story. And really just explains to small children under the age of six that although the person they loved is no longer physically here, um, that they'll always be in their heart and they'll always be, um, you know, looking out for them. And it's, it's a lovely book and, and that has come recommended by various uh, childhood bereavement um, specialists and um, charities. The book for the 6 to 12 year olds is called The Invisible String. Again, gives a little bit more information to the older children to help them, again, talk about grief in a way that's understandable to them. So that's um, a lovely book. Um, as long as love is in your heart, the invisible string will always be there. Um, and it's basically, again, age appropriate, lovely stuff uh, that comes with a workbook. And this workbook, again, has lots of things to do for 
the adults to do with the children to remember the person who has died um, again it's practical stuff about going back to school normalising the feelings that you're feeling and it's a real aid to the adult uh, to help the child um, in the weeks and months and years after their loved one has passed for the older children um, you know they can be a, a mature 10 or 12 year old or maybe an immature 12 or 13 year old so there's a little bit of overlap with, with some of the the books so we can talk to the adults at the time and and, and kind of gauge what what to give as well so we you know it isn't rigid with the age groups it's just a guide so for the older kids we have a book called you will be okay by julie stokes and again that that's quite specific for the older kids and it, it just it normalizes the feelings the feelings of anger and the feelings of guilt and the, the the feelings that come with being an older child with grief and that's again very highly recommended from a lot of places also i thought it was a good idea to supply a journal a feelings journal and this is from lots of research even with adults to suggest that writing down your feelings is very therapeutic uh, and this is a basic book that's just blank and at the top it says today I feel and it's blank and because so today I feel sad because you know and you write down your feelings and it's very therapeutic that often and you'll find this yourselves you know when you take something out of your head and you write it down it feels like that weight is off your shoulders and it's physically written down so that can be very helpful for the older kids um, so that's it that's that's the concept the idea um, the the books the pack um, I've yet to receive feedback so it's early days but from a conceptual point of view and from the research that I've done I'm, I'm expecting the research or the, the feedback to be um, to be positive um, just from an advice point of view um, you know the 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 most important thing I think and the, and the thing that I would advise people the most the most take home thing is really to be passionate to speak passionately um, you know to get people on board with your idea so you need your colleagues on board you need your management on board whatever your idea is you have to be passionate I can't stress that highly enough to get people to buy into your idea or your project you have to be passionate you can't and research will back this up you can't just say the evidence says this or the data says this you, you have to sell your project and you have to be passionate and I think my passion for this um, served me in good stead um, in lots of different ways I got a discount on the books from the manager of the bookstore in Kilkenny um, built a good rapport explained what the project was about um, and got a good discount so that, that was one of the things if you speak passionately to your higher management, your CEO, your director of nursing, your, you know, the, the decision makers, the chief decision makers in the hospital, um, that will stand you in good stead of, you know, gotten um, assurances that this project will be funded beyond the thousand euros from the QI award. Um, and I think that was stemming from uh, my passion about it and, and, and the buy in that I got from people. I think it's important as well for promotion and that feeds into the passion as well. You have to promote your idea, promote your your project. Uh, if it lands on an awareness month, childhood uh, bereavement awareness month kind of fell when we were launching. So that was extremely helpful. We got some traction on social media, um, the hospital Twitter account, you know, inviting people to the launch giving a passionate plea about the the use of the the, the packs um, and talking to the right people. You have to talk to the people who make the decisions in the hospital and hopefully 
that will make this scalable it'll make it you know future proof that this project will be scaled not only within your hospital but you know in other hospitals and it will be funded going forward um obviously things have to be run through ethics your director of nursing your hospital policies um, it has to fit with your policies and guidelines so that that's important not to kind of go down a rabbit hole of getting into a project that is ultimately going to fail for um different reasons um and just keep in mind often the simplest ideas are the most effective you know you can overthink and overthink and overthink you know and sometimes it's just having that empathy and compassion and putting yourself in somebody else's shoes what would i want in a situation sometimes it's from a complaint or something that's gone wrong um somebody had a bad experience and you don't want that experience to happen again and that's where that idea comes from sometimes your ideas come from personal experiences from talking in the canteen about something from hearing about somebody's bad experience um and don't underestimate the impact you can have on people's lives you can you know nurses are notorious about underestimating themselves and undervaluing themselves and you know one thing i've learned is that we can make massive changes to people's lives and massive improvements and and you know i felt this on a personal level with my grief and the support that i got from uh the charity failacon and and you know i i i recognize that that's all in us that uh, anybody can make a change that will improve people's experience um even in the midst of trauma and grief and pain and suffering you can make a difference and you know it's really important not to underestimate yourself and not to underestimate the small ideas um there's huge opportunities and there's an untapped i think uh area of of simple things that we can do particularly around end of life care that will make a massive difference um one of the areas i'm looking into and i think is is underutilized is memory making at end of life i think it's a very simple idea but has profound impacts on people uh, and i'm i'm saying that from a a personal point of view and from feedback i've got in work as well um in st luke's kilkenny we offer uh, locks of hair we do hand prints um and we're developing more ideas around memory making i think involving involving families with with the memory making is very important uh, families getting hands on with the person who's in the bed the unfortunate person who's who's suffering and dying um they can spend time with them taking the locks of hair and and you know doing making memories i think it's an area that we can all improve on and make improvements on and and um i think if anybody is looking for an idea or looking to get inspired um that's an area that uh, i think uh, could be explored um other things simple practical things like you know free parking parking permits little things to put in a car to say that you know I'm with a sick relative and I see you so they don't get clamped or little small practical things that don't cost a lot of money but can make a massive impact um so that's it that's my talk that's my project um again I'd like to say thanks to the Irish Hospice Foundation for the award um it's really helped get this project off the ground i hope this project is going to continue and will develop it and improve it and i wish you all the best of luck with your projects and your ideas um and remember be passionate speak passionately and you will get people on board um and the very best of luck with your ideas anybody who wants to reach out and contact me um you can get me through uh st luke's intensive care 
and leave a message I'll get back to you um, I'm happy to talk to people with similar ideas hopefully we can collaborate and work on things uh, in the future okay take care